church family, friends, and relatives. Today's teaching that I, the Lord put in my heart to share was, I'll call it storms. Storms of life. Other people call it challenges, bad luck, problems. But I call it storms. Because when I was younger, like some of you are here, we always go through storms in life, but there's a rainbow after every storm. So you don't have to worry that it's not going to get through. But ask yourself, who likes storms? None of us. I don't. We like for life to go happy, victorious, healthy. Just think, if Jesus suffered when he walked on earth, who are we not to suffer? Since we fail Jesus every day. I do. I'm speaking for myself. But this storm is what I called them. And like I kept saying, when I was learning and I was at a younger age, like your children right here, your grandchildren, I would always say, why? Why? Why me? Why? But then I remembered that in school they would teach us that I belonged to a king that created you and me that created heaven and earth, that loves us so much, he tries to teach us in the word, in his word, every day. If we read the word, we'll find out who we are in Christ, how much he loves us, all that he does for us, all that he wants to do for us. So just stay in touch right there. Usually I start with quotes, and that keeps me motivated as well. I start with Sid Ziegler. He says, people that... People say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. You don't have to be great at something to start, but you have to start to be great at something. And he says, remember that failure is an event, not a person. You were born to win, but to be a winner, you must Plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. Positive thinking, positive thinking. Billy Graham says, only those who want everything done for them are bored. He also says, our society strives to avoid any possibility to offend anyone except God. We always try to please everybody but the one we should. Joel Osteen says, all of us look back to see things that should have defeated us. You're still standing. That's the goodness of God. In Philippians 4, 11, and I'll go there. 4, 11. It says, um, for I have learned to be content over whatever the circumstances I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every and in, 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 in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who strengthens us. When we go through trials that we see things going for our best, We stop and think and say, hey, I got that done. I got that done. But no, you have to remember Philippians where it says, I can do all things through whom? Through him who strengthens me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I have learned to trust Jesus, my creator, my king, my heavenly father, my all. And he is my heavenly father. So I turn to him on a daily basis from starting. And I was reading where pastors, one of his notes says that prayer should be the beginning of every morning. Not a conversation with your friends or a strife with your neighbors or uh, your husband or your friend. No, you start with prayer every morning. Stop and think. You have been around with strength for every storm or battle. I call it a battle as well. Every day you learn that it's the battle that we have to fight. And when we know the Lord and have accepted Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior, you know the battle is His. And what happens? We're victorious in every and all the battles we fight. The forces that are for you are greater than the forces against you. 
receive this in Jesus' name. And every day try to read something and learn something and receive it every day and say, I claim it, I receive it in Jesus' name. In Titus, and we don't have to go there, it's a little short one, 2.13, it says, hope in him every day. Hope in him every day. Not in your neighbor, not in your co-worker, not in the person that lives with you, your children. Hope in him every day. Then you won't go wrong and you will be victorious and in every and all situations. To best our storms are often... To beat our storms often, sometimes we have to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Only through the word do you learn who you are, who you belong to, who is the king that rules over you. Who are we in Christ? Who am I in Christ? We are his masterpiece. That's what the word says. We are his masterpiece. Can you just believe that? Can you just see that? We are the apple of his eye, it says. We will never, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Then once again, I stand on a lot of the promises for us. The promises are in the word and you will know them until you read the word and study it and know who you are, who you are. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7, let's go there. It says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. And sometimes we pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, I got this done. I did it. I did it. But no, we have to stop and think, who do you give credit to? Your Heavenly Father. You give your Heavenly Father honor and glory because He lives in you and He's working through you to be victorious in every and all situations. So it says here, to show the suppressing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed. Whenever I'm going through trials and situations, I remember and I stand on 2 Corinthians 4, 7, where it says, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. So you have to remember what to stand on and who to look forward to when you're going through your storms, your challenges, your problems. Go to the Word. That's the answers right there for everything that goes on in your daily life. Everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly, like the movie says. So you have to stand on what you know to learn and really get it in, to declare it, receive it, and claim it every single day. I get happy with power knowing that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is on my side daily. It doesn't say he's on somebody else's side, the problem makers, but he's on your side. I had Pete and I storms that I called the last two weeks. The enemy is always trying to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Who? Us. You, your family, your peace, your joy, your everlasting, your mind. If he can control your mind, he'll destroy you. But when you learn the word and study it as long as I have, you know that the King of King and Lord of Lord loves you. He'll take care of you. He'll do for you. He'll fight your battles for you. You don't have to fight them alone. And because he wins, and I learned the part that I like best, that I can win all the battles that I fight in Jesus Christ. So I like to win. I don't gamble, but I gamble with the one that wins all the time. Man. I don't gamble because you don't know if you're going to win or not. Here you know you're going to win. You're victorious in everything. The enemy is always trying, remember, to steal, kill, and destroy your family, your peace, your joy, your everything, your mind. Don't let him. The last two weeks, we, Pete and I went through our storms that I call it. There's seasons that are so peaceful, so joyful, then the devil says, let's test her, Father God, see if she'll panic over the storms they'll be sent to her. Of course, he tests, but I know who I serve. I know who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I know who I can turn to. Two, there's two toilets in our home, they broke. The dryer gave out. The car battery so I said to myself, hmm, I'll stand on Second Chronicles 20:15 that the battle, that Jesus fights my battles for me. Okay, Father God, I said, that's your problem. That's not mine. That's your problem. 
and I trust you enough because I know you and you see my heart, that I trust you with everything that is in me. You take care of the problem. Pete would look at me. If I faint, Pete faints. If I worry, Pete worries. If I am stressful, he's stressed. So I just said, no, we will not lose our peace and our joy. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. I will not let stress in. I will stop and remember I belong to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I belong. Pete belongs to the one that created heaven and earth. So I'm somebody. Even if others don't think so. To me, I'm the perfect size, the perfect color, the perfect life. Because I, the creator that created heaven and earth, created me to love me for the rest of his life. And let's turn to Romans 8.37 while we're on it. Let's see. Let's see. It says here, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors. He says, through him who loves us, loves us, loves us. Not anybody can say to you, I love you. This is the one that loves you. He says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, includes the enemy, the devil, the evil spirits, Neither heights nor depths nor anything else in all creations will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's who we are. That's who all of us are right here. Once you learn that somebody special created you, that he'll always, always love you, even if you fail him every day, which I do, every day, every day, he still loves me. You can always turn and know he's right there. And like parents, I was thinking the other day, like parents, when your children start walking, you're right there with them so they won't fall. You're right there with them so that those babies can turn and look and say, there's mama, there's daddy. That's the way our heavenly father is for us. He's right there. And he'll command angels, protect my child, Margaret, the babies, Pete, pastors, you know, protect them because they're mine. I created them, and I'll protect them always from who? From the enemy that tries to steal, kill, and destroy. So you have to know that's where you belong. That's what keeps you going. That's what makes you special. Not because you're proud or because you have an education or because you have money. No, because the King of kings and Lord of lords loves each one of you and created you for a purpose. For a purpose. Sometimes we go through life not even understanding his destiny for us. But he made a destiny when we were born for each one of us. Pray to the Holy Spirit. I love that song, Welcome Holy Spirit. And I knew Pastor Patricia was going to sing it for me. Because I know that the King of Kings loves me. That through the Holy Spirit, when I pray in tongues, I know that the heaven falls on me. And I know what to do and what not to do. That I obey is something else. But I have a choice. Okay, you know it. Now what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be obedient or are you going to follow your best friend's steps or whatever is wrong or whatever this one's doing or whatever is in style, the green hair, the pink hair? What are you going to follow? You decide who you're going to follow. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he's got a destiny for you. So when you get up in the morning, you can always say, God's destiny be manifested in me, and I receive it, and help me, Holy Spirit, to be obedient to everything that you would want me to do this day. Just worry about this day. Coming back to all our problems, the dryers got fixed. It was so simple. The Lord said, angels, both of the toilets got fixed. There wasn't any parts in town, but they got fixed. The car battery got fixed. We got a ride even to go to Alpine to get our battery for our car. When we came home, I, I told people, Whoo, I got that done. And I remember the Lord said, hey, who got that done? Oh, I'm sorry. You fought the battle for me. Praise, honor, and glory is yours, Father God. Because you got it done for me. That I'm almost 80 years old. Pete's 82. I said, he's still doing things for us on a daily basis. And I can only just say, 
honor and glory is yours, Father God. So we continue to be peaceful and joyful until another storm comes in. Because in this world, there will be storms. There will be storms. I, it, it's just, that's just part of the game. That's just part. Remembering Philippians 4.13. Let's go there. Four thirteen says, I know what it is to be in need that I've already read it to you, but I want you to keep it in here, in here so that you won't say every day, I don't have nobody to help me. I don't have nobody to support me. I don't have any money in the bank. I don't have any money to throw. I don't have nothing. But you have to remember the Lord says, I'm here, but he is the respecter of men. He won't come and help you until you ask. You have to humble yourself to our Heavenly Father to say, Father, help me. Help me here. Help me, Father God. And He'll never say no. I'm a witness to it. In all my lifetime, He has never said no to me. Never. Not because of who I am. I'm a sinner. But because of Jesus on the cross. He promised that through his son Jesus. That I could have my cake and eat it too. And I'm living proof. That you can have your cake and eat it too. But I love to read this one again and again. I said I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well fed or hungry. Whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through whom? Through him who gives me strength. So just keep on keeping it on, family. Because once you get it here and here, you've got it made. You've got it made. You've got it made. I confess and declare out loud daily, my honor and glory, Father God, are yours. I will never ask or look back for anything because I have everything. Love from our Heavenly Father, Creator of heaven and earth. I will never lack for anything because mainly I have love, material things, etc. I am a daughter of a king who created heaven and earth. You have to remind yourself because if so and so doesn't like the way you look with the young generation, I'm old, I stay home with pizza. He doesn't bother me, doesn't criticize me, so I'm the queen of the house. But the young ones that have to go out there and work and put up with society, put up with your co-workers, with the people in town, with the stores. I mean, but just remember, even if they look at you ugly or up and down, I've been there and done that when I was young. But you just tell yourself, I am a daughter of a king and a man as well. I am a son of a living king and straighten up and... Look straight and know that who you are, you're a masterpiece of the King of kings and Lord of lords who created heaven and earth. You will never, he will never stop loving you. It is written the way we read in Romans. In Romans. It is written, and I'm going to go back to Romans 4, 78 and see what that says. I don't know what I put it down for, but I put Romans 4, 78. Mm-hmm. It's for, it's for 18, I believe. It says, yeah, 4, 7, and 8. That's what it is. It says, blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven. I remind myself every day because I failed my Heavenly Father every day. He says, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sins the Lord will never count against you, will never count against you. Man, if you just read that every day, you've got it made. You just don't have to worry. Blessed are those, and I always write everything, you'll be blessed, blessings. And I said, I wonder why I love the word blessings, but when I found it here in Scripture where it says, blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered by the blood. Blessed is the one whose sins the Lord will never count against them. People will remember but he doesn't. It's like a blackboard where he writes all our sins and we feel guilty because so-and-so makes you feel guilty. Your best friends, your co-workers, people in town. 
Yeah, but then you remember the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that died on the cross for you, and, and he wrote here, Francis, this thing. But when you repent and he just looks at you, your child, like you do your children every day, he erases it never to remember from the east is to the west and north is to the south. Praise you, Father God, for loving your children. Romans 8, 26. Let's see what that one says. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. I forget, I'm always giving credit to me. Me, look what I did, Pete. Then the Lord says, who did it? Oh, excuse me. Look what Jesus helped me do. He says, we do not know what we are to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes people in accordance with God. He already knows who you are in him, especially because God doesn't look at your outward appearance. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm not a 19-year-old size one or two. You know, he looks at my heart. The word says he looks at your heart and says, praise the Lord. That's the only reason that you don't have to fight or be like somebody else or compete or thinking, I should look like so-and-so or dress like so-and-so. You're specially made. You're one of a kind that Jesus loves, like when your children are born. That's what I always get to because I always love my children. I'm blessed with boys on Pete's side of the family, and I had three girls. So I've had the best of everything and the worst of everything. You know, it just combines. But when I go to the Word, I know that if I love them and forgive them, He does that for us, the whole world. Can you just imagine? And I tell my friends when I pray, and you don't get your prayers answered, it's because Jesus is still dealing with me. So he's going to have hard work on, on his hands. But he'll get to you eventually, because he's still dealing with me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Second Timothy 3. This is the one that hurts me. And I keep telling my children that I like to read it to them, and I like to, I like to write letters, and I do to my children. Because it hurts me, but our Heavenly Father wanted us to learn from it and repent from it and do what we're supposed to do on a daily basis. Because to me, and I was asking my pastor, to me this is the end times. It's going to get worse. But the enemy is always going to be trusting us. See where your child goes, God. You love that one and that one, and she's always praising you and lifting her hands the way I do. Because I show off for the Lord. They say, look at your children, but give them something hard and see what they're going to do. Are they going to stand by you? Or, or I can have them. You decide. But we decide on a daily basis. We decide. But in Second Timothy it says, but mark this. There would be terrible times in the last day. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, Boastful, proud, abusive, and disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. That's what our Heavenly Father says. So we need to pray very hard, not even for the youth, our children, our uh, neighbor's children, for the whole world in itself, because this is what's happening. I've already seen it. I have a few cases in our families that we're already seeing this. And what do you do? You just can't panic and try to fight the battle. I said, what can I do? But God can So the battle is the Lord's. I go back to the battle is the Lord's. So he's going to get it done for us. So, family, it was just, I talk a lot and it's short, but I didn't want to get you bored. So, let me just pray for you and we'll end it right here. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, for my church family, for each one represented here, Father God, that you have a destiny to be manifested in each one of them, Father. You love them more than anybody in this world can love them, Father God. You will always support them and back them up and fight their battles for you, Father God. Thank you that we weren't left off in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of, of, of Graceland or in the middle of nowhere 
trying to die because we didn't have anybody to love us, to support us, to do for us, to just lift them up, to fight our battles for us. Oh, Father God, we just thank you for Jesus on the cross, Father God, and for helping us on a daily basis to carry our cross too. But knowing that we're not alone, to go back to the Word and find out who you are, who you belong to, who is the one that's going to help you, and who loves you the most. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen, Father God. Amen and amen. And I thank you, family.